Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to work with availability sets in Microsoft Azure. Now, in uh, Microsoft Azure uh, availability sets, uh, uh, you can create them very easily and manage them. So all you need to do is to go into uh, search and type availability, availability sets. Once you are in availability set, you can go, in, go ahead and create uh, availability set. Uh, add and will give you some options here you need to say which what type of availability set do you need now before creating availability set we have here you, you need to provide a name and then you need to provide subscription here you need to provide a resource group here you need to provide location now here are two things that are important to understand fault domains and update domains let's understand that so uh, in availability set, in availability set, this is how we can understand fault domain and uh, and an update domain. So let me first write availability set. In availability set, there are two things. One is fault domain. And second one is update domain. Now, fault domain and update domain. Uh, in fault domain, what happens is uh, availability sets are basically for high availability of uh, clusters, you can say, or, this, or, or similar servers. For example, if I have a cluster of four servers for a website, so I have server one, server two, server three, and they are all in a cluster and they are all going to let's say uh, uh, let's say are going to amazon.com or maybe ebay.com so ebay.com so all requests that are coming to ebay.com are, are automatically load balance between server 1, server 2, server 3 and server 4 now if all of these servers are sitting in one location in one rack let's say uh, we have a data center and within a data center we have racks so you have rack number one and you have rack number two you have rack number three so this is uh, you don't want to keep all your server in one rack so basically what you want to do is you want to keep server number one in rack number one and then server number two in rack number two and server number three in rack number three so basically just to make sure that if one rack goes down the other server is available so this is Basically, this concept is known as fault domain. Fault domain is like if you're saying that my four servers are divided into two fault domains. Basically, you're saying that you, you, you want to divide your server in two racks, in hardware, two hardware racks. So, this is, so if, you, if your servers are in three racks, uh, hard, uh, three different locations, or three racks in, in one data center, so you're saying that you have three fault domains. So this is a fault domain. Fault domain basically refers to a rack in a, in a data center. Whereas update domain, update domains are are, uh, are are configured based on a maintenance time. Let's say your company has 50 servers and uh, 50 server needs to be updated this weekend or in this month. So you divide them into, let's say, uh, uh, you divide them into three groups. Or, or two groups. One group is 25 server going this week, the other group is 25 server going the second week. So this is basically two update domains. So we don't want to keep all of our servers in, uh, in, in, in just one uh, update domain. We want to keep them in two different domains. So if one uh, group of servers, so this is these all server needs to be restarted this weekend, there is another group that will be going next weekend. So we'll keep half of our server here and half of our server here. So basically, again, providing high availability for our four servers. So this is what availability set is. So this is what we're going to configure in our uh, in Microsoft Azure. We're going to create an availability set. Then we're going to create uh, four uh, web servers, and then we're going to then this avail based on this availability set uh, settings, all the servers will be automatically allocated in fault domains and update domains. So let's get started now. Uh, so I'm going to go back to here. So 
first of all name the availability so availability set so this is web services uh, availability set and then we can create a resource group or you can use an existing resource group so I'm going to say web uh, availability set resource group 1 here and then um, and then we can select fault domains and update domain. So the bigger your number of servers are, you need to have more fault domains. In my case, I have four servers. So I'm going to just keep two fault domains. And there are five update domains. I'm going to reduce this to two update domains. And we're going to keep as is, managed, yes, aligned, and then create. So this is we have created an availability set. So again, availability set is basically for high availability of uh, servers. And uh, so for now, once the availability set is created, we can go to all resources and we should be able to find availability set. If we go into availability set at the moment, we can see that availability set has been created. And availability set has been created. There are two fault domain, two update domain, and no servers, no virtual machines are located at this time. So next, what we need to do, we can go to virtual machines and we need to create four virtual machines. So I'm going to create four virtual machines. So virtual machine number one with uh, server 2016. Here we need to provide a name. So web vm1 and username web vm admin webvm admin and I'm going to use the password webvm e capital so again webvm password one and I'm going to do webvm password one and then here I can select uh, can select the existing resource group which is I just created web availability set RG1 and here uh, let's leave central US and okay so we're going to select uh, hardware hardware is uh, I'm going to select the cheapest one available which is B1S Next, here uh, in availability set, so here availability set, I'm going to go to availability set and here I can see my own availability set that I just created. So if you remember that you, where, wherever your availability set is, whatever region, you need to create VM in the same region. So here I need to open RDP port, it's a Windows Server, and click OK. And you need to agree to terms and conditions and click Create. So I will create one, and at the same time, I'm going to create three more here. So I'm going to create three more exactly like this, and then I'm going to come back. I'm going to pause the video here, and uh, and then I'm going to come back once two other three other VMs are created. So I just created my second VM. I'm going to create a third VM. Um, now in creating these uh, VMs, uh, one uh, quick tip, uh, especially working in Microsoft Azure or any cloud platform, uh, that for the username and password, always keep it in, uh, always write it somewhere, because sometimes you won't remember what was the admin password you selected. So VM3. Uh, so I have it in my notepad. I normally keep it here. So this is my user account, the username, and then and I do have a password. So this is the second VM I am facing, and using the same availability set uh, resource group, and okay, and here. I'm going to select the hardware. Hardware next. So this is the third one being created. 
just make sure your availability set exists here. If it doesn't exist in under availability set, it might be that you uh, <coughs> you created an availability set in a different region, or maybe not in the same resource group. So here, create, and I'm going to create the fourth VM. I'm going to create the fourth VM again Windows. You can create Windows or Linux or whatever VMs. Um, as long as they are in the same availability group, so web VM four and the password. So copied from my notepad and username. Use existing group and then US Central. Okay. So now it will take a few minutes for it or for all of the VMs to be created. I'm going to pause the video here and once all of the VMs are created, we're going to test the availability set uh, configurations. Let me quickly select the availability set and then select a port and create. And right here, I can just say create. Now, my four VMs are being created. So you can say four VMs are being created. Once they are all created, then we can go and check, look into availability sets. That if they are properly deployed in, uh, in respective fault zones or update, uh, fault domains or update domains. Okay, so my four VMs are created successfully and they're in running state. But I'm going to go back to virtual machines and make sure that all four VMs are sitting in the same resource group and they are in running state. So in order to make sure the availability set did its magic by uh, allocating or deploying VMs in their respective fault and update domain, we need to go to all resources and locate the availability set. Within in the availability set, in the first screen, under overview, you can see <coughs> that WebVM1 and WebVM3 are sitting in fault domain 0, whereas WebVM2, WebVM4 are sitting in 1. Uh, since we have two fault domain and two update domain, now that means if rack, you can say fault domains uh, racks or uh, where they are uh, mounted, um, so if, uh, if rack zero goes down, so there will be there will always be rack number two, uh, web VM two or web VM four. They won't be affected. And uh, at the same time, in update domain, if uh, if we web VM one, which is sitting in update domain one, is being updated and restarted, there are two other servers that are sitting in update domain one that they won't be affected. So guys, this is how we configure and use availability sets. Uh, thank you for watching this video. I will see you in the next video.